Our next keynote speech is titled Towards High Performance Blockchain by Dr. Cyprian Punjila, co-founder and head of research at Abe Foundation. Please put your hands together for Dr. Cyprian Punjila. My name is Cyprian Punjila, and I am the co-founder of the ABE Foundation and also the head of research. At the same time, I am a senior lecturer at the Western University of Timisoara, Faculty of Mathematics and Computer Science. Today, I'll be talking about an interesting topic for us. Ever since we commenced the research into the blockchain-focused technologies back in 2016, and that is, I'll be talking about high-performance blockchains and how they can apply to real-world use cases today. Now, I was mentioning that back in 2016, 2017, we started our own research focused on blockchain technology. And the reason for that research was because, at the time, we were very impressed to see how the world was reacting to the blockchain events and how it was reacting to the blockchain technologies like Bitcoin. And myself, alongside Dr. Professor Viorel Negru, which is also a member of the Higher Education Council in the Romanian Ministry of Education, and he's also the director of the Senate at our own university. We started doing our own research, and we were focusing specifically on high-performance computation in particular, because we strongly believe that this is part of the future of technology as we have it today, especially in hardware systems. So that research actually moved forward as time passed by, and we ended up at a point where we realized that right now, blockchain is going to influence fintech. It's not clear yet how exactly it's going to apply to various technologies or how it's going to apply to various legislations, various countries. But what it is clear is that it will change the world in many ways, and not just one, not just one tied to the money, not just one tied to the fintech, but also one which is tied to the social aspects of humanity. And we're already starting to see a lot of initiatives in this, in this regard. So at the time, it seemed like a good idea to try and move forward on that side of the research, which is why we decided that we're going to take our own approaches for high-performance computation and try to apply them to blockchain technology as well. And part of that research lies the fact that back in 2011, our university became one of the strongest in Europe because it acquired the IBM Blue Gene-B supercomputer, which is comprised of about 4,096 cores and a cluster of Tesla GPUs, which nowadays total more than 18 teraflops of sustainable power. And that's very impressive for today because even as we stand right now, we are still listed in top 500 of supercomputers, which is available online at top500.org. And it's still one of the most efficient ways to test heterogeneous computations and heterogeneous models for computation, and particularly with blockchain technology as well. And you can see our own self-contained industry in that picture right there. Now, what's clear over time is that ever since the 1970s, we've had a very good growth of technology in terms of performance. We can see that we've adhered to what we know today to be the Moore Law, and that is, we always double the performance of computation every couple of years or so, which was an amazing achievement. But what's also becoming clear is that as the slope is almost linear, the costs themselves are almost exponential. And that means that at one point, all the costs we're going to invest into developing technology, hardware, software, and so on, is going to have to reach the physical limit of the capabilities that our systems currently support. And when the time comes, the only thing that relies on moving the technology ahead is how we can put to good use what we already have, which is why our research is focused on high-performance computation and has been published by various international publishers like Cambridge University Press, Elsevier, EG Global, Thomson Reuters, ACM, Springer, and Oxford University Press. I've been starting this research for about seven years now, and we try to apply the same concept into the blockchain-focused research that I've been telling you about. So in 2017, we launched the white paper, which was very well received by the industry because it turned out we were able to immediately find strategic partners and supporters to endorse that technology and help it move forward. And in that white paper, we propose our own blockchain, which is a native blockchain. It's not based on any of the other ones existing out there, which is also a multi-layer blockchain because on the very first level at its core, we have the cryptocurrency itself. Right now, it's a proof-of-work system because it's designed to work with heterogeneous systems in particular. 
And on top of that foundational layer, we have four more additional ones, which are also coming with some innovative concepts at the time for a native blockchain in particular. And that is refundable transactions, affiliates and commissions, the ability to lend currency inside the blockchain as a native functionality, and of course, the ability to program the blockchain. So I'll be talking a little bit about where those innovations are. Our blockchain is called ABEI, and ABEI stands for Advanced Blockchain for Enhanced Deals. That is the name we actually gave the blockchain. And I was mentioning earlier that one of the innovative concepts for a native blockchain nowadays is the fact that we support refundable transactions. And to be able to support those transactions, we also proposed a new type of mediators, a new type of, of miners, if you wish. They're called mediators, and they ensure the safe return of those transactions whenever the case arises. And of course, it's all done transparently through the blockchain. There is nothing else special requiring to make that happen. But at the same time, we also propose an innovative approach to performing distribution of affiliate funds and commissions throughout the blockchain themselves. Right now, we can only do this if you actually code it in the blockchain. Our blockchain supports it natively. And we do this to our concepts, which are detailed in the white paper, to our concept of a trusted payment gateway. But at the same time, we also propose the concept which is allowing people to lend cryptocurrency in the blockchain. I've seen a lot of ICOs try to raise a lot of money to do this very same thing using, for instance, Ethereum or other similar blockchains. Now, moving forward, one important part for us was the fact that we wanted to make the blockchain itself programmable. We wanted to make it extendable, which is why we've developed our own layer of programmability which allows us to do custom payment processing, it allows us to develop smart contracts, and at the same time, it transforms the ABEI token, the cryptocurrency at the very core, into an utility token. Now, we were talking a lot about extending blockchain functionality. So about two weeks ago, we organized at Arion University an event, which was a collaboration between the ABEI Foundation and the Ethereum Foundation, which is represented by Mr. Mihail Isia, Himself is a co-founder of the Ethereum Foundation alongside Mr. Vitalik Buterin, which you probably know already. And we've also had support from the Blockchain Association of Romania. And during this event, we talked a lot about how we can ensure cross-chain interoperability, one aspect which is often forgotten nowadays, especially given the importance that we believe it has for the near future. We're getting full support from the Western University of Timisoara, which is the first, at least that we know of in Europe anyway, because we are the first blockchain to offer and have full support from the academic, an official accredited academic institution. And at the same time, the Blockchain Association of Romania, which is represented by Mr. Armando Muza, which you can see in the picture right there. Now, one important thing that we discussed was cross-chain operability. And I was mentioning that right now, we have a lot of blockchains and we have a lot of people using them, but there is no real tangible use cases which could bring those blockchains together in one way or merge their functionality in another way. Which is exactly why in this talk that we've had at the event, we proposed a method to try and achieve that cross-chain operability. First, by supporting the Solidity programming language between the ABEI Foundation's own blockchain and the Ethereum Foundation's Solidity-based programming smart contract language. But at the same time, which is our own part of the research, by implementing our own natural language processing focused language, meta language, inside the blockchain itself. And actually, this is a picture from the event. You can see us right there with Mr. Mihail Essie and some of our top students, which are doing their own PhD into this particular type of work, and also Mr. Armando Muta from, from the Blockchain Association of Romania. Now, we were fortunate enough to be able to get some really useful feedback from the community. And one of such feedback came from one of our strategic partners, which is the Western University of Timisoara, of course, because that is the one that is endorsing and supporting the research. But at the same time, we have a very strong strategic partner through APA Systems in Malta, which is a fintech payment processor gateway. And I will be talking a little bit later about this in particular. And we also have a strategic partnership with SciTech Software in Romania, with the Blockchain Association of Romania, with Exchange.one, a cryptocurrency in Malta, with the ADX International Group of Companies, with offices in Singapore, United States, Malaysia, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and South Korea, and at the same time with CyberThor Studios, again in Romania. 
It's been a very impressive development for us over time. In 2019, we've actually founded the Abe Foundation, which is why I'm here today to discuss and tell you more about it. And what we've seen is that there's still interest in high-performance computation, and there's still interest in innovative technology in the blockchain-focused world, which is why in less than six months, ever since this blockchain went live, we were managing to amass more than 100,000 active wallets, which is eight times faster than the growth of Bitcoin at the time, and even 2.5 times faster than the growth of Ethereum at the time. And for that, we're very grateful. Now, as part of the ABA Foundation, we have myself as co-founder and head of research. We have Professor Viorel Negru as a PhD, and we have Mr. Philip, Philip Maria Sauerborn as a legal advisor. And just as any major blockchain initiative, we're focusing on advancing that research even further, which is why in 2019, our coin was also accepted on the exchange that one platform, the cryptocurrency, which is based in Malta. And for 2020, we have some ambitious plans, including moving our coin to ZBX as well as Huobi. Now, the research and development agenda for the ABE Foundation lies in the very same core concepts that we started from, and that is publish endorsements for the technology and prove it through proper research, which is hopefully going to be supported by publishing in various journals, conference proceedings, and various other conferences throughout the world. And that research is going to be included in top international publishers by Cambridge University Press, Thomson Reuters, Springer, Elsevier, yeah, and Oxford University Press. And we've already initiated that process. We've already had papers published, which I will talk in a few moments. And there is also a number of other papers which are in preprint format and are going to be published later on. One of the papers that's already been published is called Improving Blockchain Security and Validation Through Heterogeneous Computing. It was published in Computational Intelligence for Security Information Systems 2020 in the Advances in Intelligent Computing and Systems series as part of Springer International. And it was called one of the most innovative paper at the conference, which is also the reason why they've also invited us to submit an extended version for an upcoming journal. Now, I was mentioning about the strategic partnerships that we had with APA Systems. APA Systems is nowadays using under the hood the same technology that lies at the very core of our ABA research. And that means right now, APA Systems is capable of processing as a payment processing gateway thousands, tens of thousands of transactions per second, which is a major improvement compared to all the other blockchain focused approaches that they took in the past. And it's also helping them move forward at the same scale and at the same pace. And I'm saying it's helping them move forward because one very important aspect for APA Systems was the fact that they wanted to ensure real-time transaction processing. And that means a person that's using a tablet or a smartphone or a computer is capable of opening up a wallet with APA Systems. In that wallet, it's capable of depositing Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dash, EOS, Ripple, Zcash, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum Classic, Litecoin, or ABA, which is our own coin. And once that is deposited into eBay, it should be instantly allowed to be spent through the three different types of cards that they offer. The eBay Red Card, which is a China Union Pay based card, the eBay Gold Card, which is a MasterCard based card, and also the eBay Black Card, which is a Visa card. And we're very proud to, to stand here and express our gratitude to our supporter, but at the same time, express our happiness to see that this technology is evolving and right now there's three different types of cards available which allows it to spend the cryptocurrency in real time. So as part of the academic initiative that we have as on, part, on behalf of the ABA Foundation, we are organizing our own special session on blockchain security under the ABA Foundation umbrella, upcoming in CISIS 2020, which is the International Conference on Computational Intelligence and Security for Information Systems, with proceedings to be published by Springer International. We're also presenting our own special session on blockchain developments for smart contracts designed for scientific research as part of the Senex 2020 22nd International Symposium on Symbolic and Numerical Algorithms for Scientific Computing. And best of all, even though right now the ABA blockchain is a private blockchain, it's confined to its strategic partners, of which we should also mention the Max Planck Digital Library, a part of the Max Planck Society. Just recently, we became a part of the consortium, and we're very happy to announce that here, because it's not actually in the presentation. And early in 2020, the 
whole blockchain itself is going to be open source and is going to be released on GitHub, along with all the upcoming proceedings and the research for it. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoy the conference, and I hope to see you again soon.